In this video, we'll cover the coding implementation for the BMS. And I'll try to go line by line and explain generally how the code works here. Starting with the variable declarations, we have the six voltage sensors and we assign them to A0, the analog input A0 through A5 of the Arduino. And I used constant in here because it saves RAM space and we'll reread re the voltages upon each step in the code to make sure we have updated voltage readings for the batteries. Then we have the, all these floats here, which are for the voltage divider circuit for the voltage sensor. Uh, you have V outs, the six V outs, the six V ins, which correspond to different points on the voltage divider circuit. And you have the two resistors used. One is a uh, 30 kilo ohm resistor. The other is a 7.5 kilo ohm resistor here. And then we have the value placeholders, value one through six. The battery voltage, so BV1 is battery voltage one. We set those to zero at first to have a variable to use. And then here are the voltage offsets, and these are needed for slight variations in the circuitry. Uh, and we can verify this for your particular case by using a voltmeter for each cell. And you'll see I've used several different offsets here for the different battery batteries. So BV1 offset, BV2 offset, and so on. Moving to the void setup, now getting into the initialization of the program. We have the pin modes for the relays. So, and to note there was one shift here due to the wiring where this uh, pin mode two is actually the relay one. So there's a shift by one, which I've noted here in my comments above the section. And we do the same all the way down. And then of course you need to use serial.begin 9600. That's the speed we're choosing to use in this case. And you can choose any speed you like, whichever works. And we delay two seconds here, 2000, just so that we start the program up without any errors upon initialization. And moving to the first function, we have this read voltages function. So instead of calling this whole function, all the insides of it, every time we need to read the voltages within the code within the loop, we create this function outside the loop. And what we're doing here is we have the six values. We use the analog read function of voltage sensor one and so on up to six. And then we have this voltage out one equation that we use for the uh, voltage divider circuit. And there's many videos on this online. I suggest looking at one of those for a review, but this is what works for that uh, common Arduino voltage sensor, voltage uh, divider circuit. And the 1024 is converting from digital to analog. To note the five is because of the five volts in Arduino we're using for the power supply. So since it's on fi the five volt uh, system here, that's why we need to multiply this value one by five to convert it to the correct analog voltage out. Once we have that V out, we solve for our V in using the voltage divider with the R1 and R2 resistor. And again, see that reference uh, I'll put a link down in the description of a reference video covering the voltage divider setup. And so we, now we solve for BV1, which we have equal to VN1 plus the offset. So the voltage of N1 is our, our voltage of our first battery. And then we're applying our battery voltage one offset. And that's due to, again, the variations in the circuitry. And now BV2, here's to explain where this is coming from. We use the V in two, which is actually like the first two cells in series. And then we subtract off the point of the V in one, which measures from the, the first cell to ground. And we also add the battery voltage two offset here, which we get by using our ohm meter and testing what the offset needs to be in our case. And so on. So these cells, then we just have BV3 and we repeat from subtracting the third point in the circuit, and then we subtract the second voltage and add the BV3 offset and so on. And another function we have is the printing for the voltages to the serial monitor so we can see what those voltages are. 
And so this is just printing the two battery voltages off for now uh, in our test case before we connect six cells, we're just gonna start with two. And moving on to the void loop. So this is really the heart of the program, moving on to incorporating the functions and going through the, the core of the, of the coding. So starting off, we update the voltage readings with our read voltages function, which we had above here. And I'll just reference it. Here's our read voltages function, does the whole reading and updates the voltage sensors. And that's there. Then we have our delay factor. And so this is used to optimize the amount of delay between the charge and the discharge here uh, for very unbalanced or relatively well-balanced cells. So we're gonna have a longer delay for really unbalanced cells and a shorter delay for balanced. And the reason why we have this is because if you have two cells that are far off, such as three volts and four volts, you wanna have longer delays, longer charge time, and then longer discharge time to balance them faster. But when we get close, such as like four volts to 4.1 volts, that's when we need shorter delays because otherwise we'll overcharge or over discharge the cells. So that's what this delay factor is doing here. And I just use a simple uh, if else if statements to um, find what we should use for that delay factor. And so it took the absolute value of the difference between battery voltage one and battery voltage two. And then said if they're greater than one volt, then we have a delay factor of six because we want to elongate that time where we're charging or discharging each cell and so on. So each of these brackets, the delay factor here is four for when we're between one and 0 0.5 volts and so on. So when we get very close down here and you can see here is between 0.1 and 0.2 volts is at one. And then once we go below, so else would be everything below the 0 0.1 volts. And that we use a factor of 0 0.5 to have a very short charge time and a very short discharge time. Starting with our top level loop in the, the void loop, we're gonna have an if statement. And the goal of this is to keep the cells in the range of 4.08 to 4.12 volts. And this is an optimal tolerance to allow us to not run the program forever and not be constantly trying to balance cells, but within a good range so that they're well balanced. So this first if statement is, if the battery voltage one is less than 4.08 volts, and then we have several or statements, the double brackets here, the double sim single lines, uh, if battery voltage one is greater than 4.12. So that anytime we're within the battery voltage of 4.08 and 4.12, then we won't run the charge discharge and we will be balanced. And we'll have that in an else statement at the end of the program. But the same thing, we have the OR statements for the battery voltage too. So if any of these conditions are true, in other words, if any cell is below 4.08 or above 4.12, then we wanna run our balancing process, which includes the charge and then discharge of any cell that's unbalanced. And next we, again, we will continually call this updating the read voltages function to make sure we have the most up-to-date uh, voltage reading. Now within this first if loop, first I have here the charging control. And so we're gonna be using Relay 7 for that, which I talk about in the hardware section. We'll show you in the next video on the setup and the program actually running through. So here's this first if statement for the charger control. And we have, if the battery voltage one is less than or equal to 4.10, and I chose 4.10 to be a midpoint to that 4.08 and 4.12. And we use double and here for a Boolean and function. The battery voltage is above 2.5 volts. The reason why I chose 2.5 here is to make sure if we had a shorted cell, it would be at zero volts, and then we wouldn't wanna charge a shorted cell, which could cause heating and overheating, which could be potentially dangerous. And then we do the same thing for the battery voltage two, less than or equal to 4.10, and battery voltage two greater than 2.5 for safety. So we're gonna print off charging now so we can see this in serial monitor and know uh, what's happening during the charging phase. 
we again read voltages. Now we have the print voltages, which we have the print voltages function above. And we delay a very small delay here of just half a second, 500 milliseconds, um, to allow for accurate voltage printout. So we can see that the actual voltage read here won't be affected when we close the relay for the charging here. So in order to close that relay, remember we were shifted by one, so it's eight here, but it's actually relay number seven. And we digital write to that pin of the output digital pin for the Arduino high. And what that does is close the relay so that current starts to flow from the charger through the battery series loop and charge the batteries. And now here's our delay. This is how long we're gonna charge for. In this case, I did 15 seconds and multiply by the delay factor. So the delay factor again is gonna be high. Uh, it was a factor of six if we had a voltage delta of one volt or greater. And so that would be six times 15 seconds, which is a nice long time for charging, um, which we want because we're very unbalanced at that time. And then we did write low to stop the charging. Then we print that we have stopped charging and we're allowing the voltages to stabilize for six seconds. And that's what this delay is here, also commented. And then we read the voltages again to ensure that we're getting the updated voltage after we delay. The reason why we want to allow voltages to stabilize is because after charge or discharge, when we apply a voltage or apply a resistor to the battery, that voltage will take some time, some transient, to return to its original or resting voltage, its stable voltage. So that's why we have this six second, which took a little bit of experimenting to determine when the battery reaches a relatively steady state. And after we read the voltages again, update the voltages, we print out the voltages after the six second stabilization and print what we're, you know, we're printing the stabilized voltages. Onto the balance slash discharge section. In this one, we're going to be reducing the voltage of the highest cell. So we start with an if statement. If the battery voltage one is greater than 4.12 volts, or the battery voltage two is greater than 4.12, so if any battery is above the 4.12 volts, we will digital write eight to low, ensuring that we're not charging at the same time. We don't want to be charging and discharging any cell at the same time. And within that if statement, we have another if statement that we separate out battery voltage one so we can separately discharge each battery if necessary. And we will print serial print line for our serial output to make sure we know we're discharging cell one. And then we're going to digital write to two, which is for the first cell with our shift, we're going to digital write high which will close that relay and start discharging through our R1 resistor. And then we have else, if we are not greater than 4.12 volts, we write low and we're not gonna discharge. And we do the same thing here with the battery voltage two, and it's the same exact process. And so we don't delay within the either if else statement we delay after so both cells could be discharged at the same time if they happen to be over that 4.12 volts threshold. And so our delay here is for the discharge of both cells if necessary, if both are high, and we discharge again for six seconds times that delay factor. And then we write low and stop discharging to both of those relays. And we, similarly to before, we print out to our serial monitor, you know, delaying for six seconds to allow the voltages to stabilize, delay for that six seconds here, and then read voltages and print them out here. And this delay, this very last delay for five seconds allows us to read the voltages on the serial monitor for five seconds to be able to see what they are and ensure that's uh, an appropriate voltage during debugging and testing phases. And lastly, we have this else statement, which writes low to both of the uh, relays in the discharge case. The last thing is we have this else statement, which matches with the first if, which says that our balancing is complete because our cells are between 4.08 and 4.12 volts. 
And if we go up here, we can see that first if, which is here. So this if matches with that final else. So if this is not true, and we all our batteries are between 4.08 and 4.12, then we have this final else down here, which displays that charging is complete and we delay to allow voltages to stabilize and then print them just so we can see them. And this final delay here within this else statement is delaying for 10 minutes. So it's 600,000 milliseconds. And the reason for this 10 minute delay is to prevent it from continuously running the loop from continuously just looping because what will happen is one cell might be at 4.08 volts, but then after an hour, it may dip down to 4.06 volts, for example. So instead of delaying for you know just 30 seconds, we delay for 10 minutes to prevent it from running constantly and constantly charging and discharging the cells. And the use case of this is to, to run it overnight in an overnight charge situation. So we're not so concerned with it running a few times after the voltage stabilizes, if the voltage dips down a little bit in the middle of the night. That pretty much summarizes the coding implementation of this BMS. And it's definitely simplified. You know, the use case is for charging overnight in a slow way, and we're not trying to get a super precise, tight uh, balance between the cells, but we're within that 0 0.04 volts range of 4.1 volts, uh, plus or minus 0 0.02 volts from the 4.10 volts. So, let me know any, any questions in the comments and we'll see you for the next video. We'll be going over the hardware integration and the testing phase and the coding actually running through with Serial Monitor.